Hi everyone, lately we've been learning about lots of different artists from around the world and today we're going to learn about the famous German artist Albrecht Dürer. Um, we're going to learn a little bit about his artworks and about his life and then we're going to create an artwork inspired by one of his famous artworks. But before we start, let's find out a little bit more about the artist. Albrecht Dürer was a German painter, engraver and mathematician. He was born in 1471 and died in Nuremberg, Germany in 1528 and is best known as a maker of old master prints. Dürer was the third child and second son of his parents who had between 14 and 18 children. His father was a successful goldsmith. Dürer had started to learn goldsmithing and drawing from his father. His father wanted him to continue his training as a goldsmith but Dürer was so good at drawing that he started as an apprentice to a guy called Michael Wolgemut at the age of 15. Wolgemut was the leading artist in Nuremberg in Germany at the time and had a large workshop making different types of works of art, particularly woodcuts for books. Later, Dürer opened his own workshop. His work was quite different from the other artists in Nuremberg who used a more traditional German style. In his workshop, Dürer started working on a series of religious pictures. He painted lots of religious themed artworks in oils and made many brilliant watercolours and drawings, which are now some of his best known works. His most iconic images are his woodcuts of the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse and Rhinoceros and many self-portraits in oils. Dürer's prints made him famous across Europe before he was 30 and many people say he is the greatest artist of the Renaissance in Northern Europe. Dürer died in Nuremberg at the age of 56. His workshop was part of his large house, which is now a museum. One of his most famous works is Rhinoceros. You'll notice that this rhinoceros is different from a real one, and it's because Dürer made this woodcut, even though he had never seen a rhinoceros. Dürer learnt about this strange beast when a sultan in India sent one to the king of Portugal as a gift. A German printer was visiting Portugal and sent a drawing to Dürer along with this description. Colour of a speckled turtle, almost entirely covered by a thick shell, in size like the elephant but lower on its legs and almost invulnerable. It has a sharp strong horn on its nose which it starts to sharpen when it, whenever it's near stones, runs with its head down between its front legs. Using this description, Dürer made his rhinoceros encased in hard speckled plates. The overlapping shapes on the rhino's head are kind of like cabbage leaves. On its back legs are more plates with repeated lines and patterns. Now that we know a little bit more about Albert Dürer and his famous rhinoceros artwork, I'm now going to show you how to draw a rhinoceros. So get your pencils and paper, rubber and sharpener ready and let's have a go at trying to draw a rhinoceros. So I'm just going to start with a nice big, uh, maybe um, just a big sort of circular shape here. Just to work out where his body will go. Maybe another big circle here. Work out how the back goes. Something like that just to get started. I'm just going to join these circles up now with just a small curving line. And from this end, I'm just going to bring uh, maybe just a curving line through here. Okay, now let's just do a smaller circle up here to work out where the, where the head's going to go. And maybe a smaller circle here, just to get some things in position. Now I'm just going to join these circles up. And maybe join a shape that comes around like this. Follow these circles around. Okay, let's just get a um, basic shape of the body here. All right, let's put some legs in. Maybe just a leg, small stumpy leg that comes down. And a foot. Let's bring a front.
front leg in, maybe it's uh, walking, so we'll have a lifting leg. Come down like this somehow. And let's just bring a foot round and bring it back into the body like this. Okay, let's put in a back leg. I'm going to just start with a big, um, just a big curving shape like this to begin with. And let's just bring uh, a line down. Bring this foot in. And just put, sort of bring these bumps in like this just to show where the heel sort of goes. All right, now we'll have another foot coming in from behind. Just bring it almost sort of a little bit curving. Bring it down and just make sure it comes up a little bit higher than this one. And that will show that it's behind in the background. Okay, bring a heel back like that. All right, we're getting some things in, in place. Okay, just bring that back up. Just get that shape right. Okay, let's get this head looking right. Now we're gonna pop a, an ear in. Just a triangle, just sitting up like this for now. And another one, we'll have this one coming a little bit forward. Okay, just to get those, let's put a line in there. Just to get the uh, shape of the ear. Okay, let's just bring the head down and come around. Now let's put a mouth in. Just a bit of a wiggly line like this somehow. Let's just work out that a nostril go here. Now, of course, because we're doing um, a rhinoceros, uh, we better put that horn in. Coming right to the end of my page here, so put a nice big curving shape there. I'm going to have um, some rhinoceroses that have one horn, some have two, and I'm going to make this like a two horn rhinoceros. almost like a little bit like a bee. Okay, and then just curve that head around a little bit. Something like this. Okay, and it's got all these sort of folds here. All right, let's just work out where the eye would go. I'm thinking it'll come sort of about here. So let's just pop in an eye, which is kind of like a lemon shape. And then we'll just put in the eye Maybe just some little circles in there, some little glassy bits. All right, and I'll come back to that. We'll, we'll make that look better in a moment. Okay, now for our rhino, what we need to do now is just start sort of getting in some of the other lines and features. I'm just gonna sort of put some sort of, you know, like a rhino has these sort of folds of skin. So let's put some folds of skin in where they might go, something like this. Just have his belly hanging a bit lower there. Maybe just just playing with these lines, just getting them to look right. Just put a few little folds up here. Just work out where some of these little creases and wrinkles go. Now, I just want this, I want this um, rhino to be um, a gray rhino. So I'm just going to, um, in a moment, just shade it. I'll just put in, I'm just gonna go over these lines first. I better put in some of these little toenails, I suppose. Just work out how they, they're just sort of these little M sort of shapes. Just like that little curving shapes. All right, now, I want this whole thing to be grey. So I'm just going to very lightly, very, very lightly, I'm doing this super lightly, just shade this in. And normally I'd probably rub out some of those shapes, but I'm, I'm just going to leave that because I'm going to blend it in. So 
just very lightly shading it in. Now I can do this very lightly. If I need to make this darker, I can just add some more, but I don't want to press really hard. Otherwise, it'll just be too hard to blend it with my finger. So really, really lightly here. Don't worry about smudging over your lines because we'll neaten all that up um, later anyhow. So here we go, I'm just using my finger to blend all this in. Okay, now if we want to darken this up, we can just darken some areas. I might have it a little bit darker along the bottom here. So I'm just pressing very lightly, just shading lots of little lines here, just so I can darken that up, blend it in. Okay, just going to darken up under this back leg here. Just darken that up. Again, don't worry about going over these lines because I, uh, I can fix all that up as I go. Neaten it all up. Bit of dark down the back of this leg. Okay, maybe a bit of dark down the back. I'm just trying to get these dark and light areas at the moment, just to show that there's light sort of coming onto his back. Just a few dark shadowy areas here. Okay, I'm just going to neaten this up a little bit as I go, just so I don't lose the shape of it. Just fix that back up, keep that shape. Okay. Um, where else? Let's have a little bit of shadow just following these sorts of folds here, just to give it a bit of shadow there. Okay, maybe a little bit of shadow just following some of these lines around. Okay, just a little bit of shadow following under here. A little bit of shadow down the side of the leg. Let's go back the other way. So I'm thinking about these legs almost like a like a cylinder, like a 3D shape. So I'm trying to get the dark on this side and a little bit lighter on this side, just to give that sort of 3D-ness to it. That's almost like a 3D shape. So 
again, just darkening up the right hand side of it. And under here as well, blend it in. And that will just help with those sort of darker and lighter areas. Um, oh, I haven't even done the ears yet, have I? Now I'm just gonna smudge that in. I'm making a bit of a mess of that, but I'm just going to use my rubber just to now keep that shape. horn to be sort of lighter because it is like a white sort of horn but I don't want it to be perfectly white just lighter than the rest of it all right let's get a bit of shadow along the bottom of his face again just very lightly filling up um, some light and sort of dark areas here. Okay, a bit of shadow down here. Okay, now I'm just going to, um, again, just go over some of my lines just to get the shape of it back. a little bit of this Just going to put a few sort of lines here, a few sort of wrinkles and sort of folds of skin here. Okay, let's just bring a few of these sort of lines and sort of wrinkles and creases. Okay, now let's just fix this ear up and just bring it round. darken the inside of the ear. But keep the outside a little bit lighter, I think. Just put the other ear in. Put a bit of dark on the inside. edges. Always keep neatening up your edges as you go. Okay, let's just try and get this around this back now. These sort of creases in. Again. Some more sort of creases in. Okay, I'm just following these lines around. Okay, just put 
the uh, these features in here. Okay, let's bring the leg, follow it around. Okay, just keep following these lines around, fill it in. Okay, um, now I think a rhino has a little tail. I forgot to put that on, but uh, we'll put a little tail on anyhow. A bit like a, a, an elephant's tail, I think. Something like that. I'm not sure if that's right, but we can have a tail. Okay, just neaten it up. Okay, so now I've got a lot of these sort of light and dark areas. Now, I just need to decide now if there's anywhere I want to make a bit darker. I'm thinking it might just still be a little bit more darker under the tummy. So I'm just going to darken that up a little bit more. So really here I'm just, um, you know, just thinking, does it need to be darker or lighter? Maybe it would be a bit more darker under here because it's in the shadows, sort of underneath would be darker. Sort of not much light would get under there. So let's just put that in. Maybe a bit more darker just down the back here. Maybe a bit more dark, just a little bit more darker down here. Maybe a bit of darkness under here too. Okay, I might just go a little bit darker here. Okay, and I'm just gonna add in now just a few little, um, you know, just a few little wrinkles and creases. Maybe a few on the legs here. Maybe, um, you know, just a few odd ones sort of here. Just, you know, here's wrinkly skin. Okay, let's not overdo it, but let's just put a few little, a few little wrinkles in here and there. Okay, so I've got these dark and light areas, so now I just want to use my rubber here. I'm going to do two things. One is I'm going to tidy up all around the outside where I've my, my dirty fingers have smudged the page because I want to keep this really nice and neat on the outside as well as um, the picture itself. So I'm just going to go around, just neaten it up, get rid of any of those dirty marks. Here, I've got to make a real mess of it, so let's clean that up. Under here. Part of it. Okay, any bits I just want to sort of tidy up or sharpen up and line, we'll do that while we're here. Okay, and now I'm just gonna use my rubber to make some highlighted areas too. So maybe just some little sort of shinier areas. Just sort of follow this line around. 
Actually, I'm going to make this a bit darker down here because that would be like over here, a bit of shadow. I've missed that. Let's just put a bit of shadow down there. Now yeah, that's better. It had a bit of, bit of sort of shininess down the back. Just sort of following these shapes around. A bit of shininess down the legs. Same here. Maybe just a little bit here. Uh, let's put a bit of shiny down the horn. This is the great thing about our rubber. We can almost use it a little bit like a white pencil and just make things look a little bit shiny in places. Put just those little highlights in. Okay, rubbers are great for that. Okay, there we go. And just a few little, few little highlights here and there. They're starting to look like a rhino. Okay, now I like to just do this at the end just to give it a bit of um, so that you're not just standing in midair. So let's just put a bit of shadow underneath it, a bit of the ground. And I'm just going to go sideways, not up and down, but sideways, just to um, just to give it a bit of shadow. Okay, nothing too crazy here, just to show that it's standing on the ground or something. I mean, you can put in a few little, a few little, you know, a bit of grassy bits if you wanted to, just, just to show that it's sort of somewhere. Okay, um, and there we go. I think I could keep playing around with that for a bit and keep tidying it up and adding different little light bits and dark bits, but I think for now, that's pretty close to um, a good looking rhino. Anyhow, give it a go for yourself, have fun, and I uh, hope yours turns out pretty good. Good luck with it, bye. I hope you enjoyed drawing that rhinoceros, and I hope it turned out well. Thank you for joining me for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye.